No, stop right there. I know what you're gonna say, and I'm not gonna allow that. Of course you clicked because of the thumbnail. What other reason do you have? I was so naive when I made Yaoi Pet Peeves 1. I was actually looking forward to reading what you guys don't like about this genre. But no. So they go victory. So they go victory. Who came because of the thumbnail? I saw the thumbnail, I clicked. So this time, I'm gonna put the most unknown underrated ship in the thumbnail. Did it work? So I'm sure we've all been waiting for part 2, I know I have. So let's start off with too many edgy scenes. No way! Listen, I'm not 16 anymore. I'm no longer a teenager whose sole purpose in life is to read BL edgy scenes. I'm a 23 year old working adult who spends most of my income on BL. I've seen it all. I mean I still enjoy the smexy scenes but it needs to be good edgy. Like there would only be 5 chapters and they would be banging twice in each chapter. I won't even know their names until the fourth chapter. I want a good balance of edgy and story. And if there are too many edgy scenes, I'd actually skip them until I get to some form of conversation. You can roll your eyes as much as you want, but when you get to my age, you'd understand. Do I sound like a BL boomer? Blaming the uke. It's when the uke is held responsible for being assaulted. That he was too irresistible, his face was asking for it. And that's why it happened. This is even worse when it comes from the seimei himself. I hate it when the seimei says something like, Omae ga warui. Do you know what that does to a person mentally? Why you gotta torture my boy like that? Lack of preparation. I may not have a ding dong. I may not have my own set of man berries, but I do have a butthole. But feelings I have. And when these characters just go at it without any preparation or preparation done wrong, I can hear literal ripping sounds echoing in my head. I've been a bookworm since day one, so naturally I have very strong visualization skills. I can feel the excruciating pain that our uke is going through. Let me remind you, this is the BL world. We have giants like Caillou, Leo, Judah. These are not normal bananas. It's an injustice to even compare them to bananas. And don't give me shit like self-lubricating males. If the story takes place in a universe like Omegaverse or that pregnant thing, fine, you're excused. But if it takes place in the normal world, no we don't have self-lubricating males. Would it kill the mangaka to do a little bit of research? Just save me from all that unnecessary trauma. Maybe I should give some basic lessons on this topic. Who knows, we have a future BL mangaka watching this video. Oh shit. Josh Sensei! So first things first, cleaning, you nasty. So the important step when it comes to preparation is to use a lubricant. Thankfully, the Japanese refer to this as lotion. Lotion sounds decent. No, Kirara, you can't use your mom's lotion bottle again. She's gonna notice. And no, Chunta, you shouldn't use honey. Have some respect, don't play with your food. Next, always use protection. Skipping this step is equivalent to skipping sunscreen in your skincare routine. Do you know how happy I get when the characters stop in the middle of their session just to put on protection? I just feel like barging in and giving each a lollipop for being such responsible good boys. Okay, now continue. Lastly, use some uh, <laughs> naughty toys. Please refrain from using random household items. I'm looking at you, Keiichi. We all know what you did with Ren and Takumi's toothbrushes last week. Okay, that should be enough material for now. Class is dismissed. Don't forget to bring your balls for PE tomorrow. Next, overused plots. Now we have all sorts of plots, storylines in the BL world. The I'm now an editor for a hentai mangaka or erotic writer who wants to use me as a model plot. The our parents just got married. So now we are stepbrothers who are somehow attracted to each other plot. The Arabic prince who is somehow crazy for this ordinary East Asian salaryman kidnaps him and brings him to his country plot. I could go on all day. I'm not exaggerating when I say that the list of overused plots in BL is long and as heck. It's a given with a genre as wide and universal. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't have favorite plots or guilty pleasure plots. I do, I do. And there's nothing wrong with reusing plots. There is an audience for it. It only becomes a problem when nothing different is added to the story, which makes it predictable. And when you've read BL for as long as I have or even longer, being able to predict what happens next really takes the fun out of it. Duh. This is why a few years ago, Korean and Chinese manhwas started booming in the scene. They don't follow a formula. Story wise, visual wise. I love reading manhwas but I have a special place for Japanese BL and it kind of feels like they're being left behind. 
feminine or girly ukes. I was so happy to see a lot of people mentioning this in the previous video and like y'all said, if you wanted to read a shoujo jose smart manga, you wouldn't be in the BL section. I personally don't have a problem with small cute ukes as long as the story is good. I mean, how can I have a problem with this? Senpai! But there are some BL stories that make me feel like I'm reading a pure Jose smart story because of how the uke is drawn. Like his background will have nothing to do with cross-dressing or an interest in looking feminine or a plot where he's always mistaken for a girl because of his soft features. He's just made to look exactly like a typical 2D flat-chested anime girl. It's even worse in drama cities. They'll get someone like Murase Ayumu. Don't get me wrong, he's amazing. But they'll make him do that abnormally high-pitched voice. And I'm like, this doesn't even feel like BL anymore. And because of this, even the Uke's personality is based off a typical 2D shoujo girl. Weak, unable to fight back. I can accept excuses like aphrodisiac, you know, drugged, outnumbered, eating sea otter's meat in a room full of very muscular men. <laughs> Hina, hina. If you're gonna make him look feminine, then at least make him strong. Or play around with his traits, make him unique. Rushed stories, like when they finally decide to be honest and confess their feelings, instead of taking the time to process everything and acknowledge that they are now a couple, they jump straight to baby making. I know that in some cases the reasoning for this is that the sexual tension before was just too strong. And so now that their feelings are out in the open, they can't hold back. They can't waste another minute, but uh, forgetting something? The reader, we need to be prepared too, mentally and emotionally. Like it or not, we are in a way a part of the story. And this whole we are so passionate because of years of sexual tension thing literally takes place in the first chapter. You gotta be convincing, a little realistic. Besides, what's the rush? Go on a date or something, start warming up first. Who knows once you get to know him, you realize that he's the crappiest person on earth. So go out. Oh, but stay away from libraries. Just a feeling. Let me give y'all some typical BL date spots. Go to the amusement park. Get on the crazy rides. Eat some cotton candy. Play one of those carnival games. Then right before the day ends, y'all can get on the ferris wheel to enjoy the sunset. And then the mood starts to pick up and y'all decide to do something risky in the park. Then no one's watching role play. But oh wait, we're supposed to avoid that. Let's try this again. Attend a matsuri together. Walk past the stalls, catch fishes, and eat caramel apples. Then find a quiet place to watch the fireworks. But the yukata just adds on to the every mood and y'all decide to do it in the forest. Who am I to complain about overused plots? Let's just move on. Annoying female characters. I hate it when a BL manga introduces a woman as the antagonist because honestly, I don't have the patience to deal with characters like this. I don't mind if the girl develops a crush on either the seime or the uke unintentionally, like she had no clue that they swung the other way. You can't blame her. But it irks me when she finds out that they're going out and knowingly tries to sabotage the relationship. Being all, I'm a woman, how could he reject me for another man? I'll admit that it just reminds me of homophobic people in real life and I just feel like releasing all the anger that I have towards them on her. It's also an overused trope. Can't the mangaka use something else, something new to sabotage the relationship? Sometimes it's kinda nice to see supportive female characters. Side couple syndrome. Every time I read a BL manga, I always end up liking the side couple more. Why is this a bad thing? Because I find it sad to easily move on from the main couple to the side. Like I still remember how I really liked Kai and Ruado's story in Pendulum, I used to wait for the updates and was crazy about it. Back then, I wasn't even a fan of that. I actually found him a little condescending. But when Remnant came out, I switched sides in an instant. Same thing with Kashko Marimashita Destiny. I was crazy about Aoi and Jiro when I first read this manga. But once it was over and we shifted to the side story of Kudo and Miyayuchi, I was like, Aoi and Jiro who? For a short while, I had a perfect theory to back this up. So when we're reading the story of the first couple, our interest is clearly on them. That's what we're looking forward to reading. But when the attention shifts to the side couple, we become more invested in the side couple because there's nothing interesting going on with the first couple anymore. Their story is over, so we pay attention to the story that is still ongoing. So naturally, we come to like it more than a completed story. Makes sense, right? But this was debunked when I realized that I experience side couple syndrome even when I watch BL dramas or movies.
movies. And in these dramas, everything's happening at once. Both the main couple and side couple's story is unfolding at the same time and pace. Like Quintin, they hardly had enough screen time, but I ended up liking them a whole lot more than the main couple. And I know that they're getting their own series next year. Same thing with History 3. Second couple, instant favorite. Tangi and Xiaofei was good, but side couple syndrome. Side couple syndrome. Which has led me to believe that there's something fishy going on. Something that we're not supposed to know. They're doing something to cause this side couple syndrome. And we're being manipulated. We're dancing to their rhythm. They must be laughing at us. No, don't give me that look. I'm serious. No, seriously, I'm telling you, there is something going on. So that's all for this video. I was really surprised to read the comments of the first video because we have a lot in common. I always thought I was a little picky or sensitive because this is fiction. There's no need to analyze it. If you like girly ukis, then continue liking it. These are just small stuff that annoy me. So it was nice to see other people sharing the same opinion as me. That's why I was able to go all out for this video. But because I spent a lot of time talking about one peeve, I could only cover this much. 